The Statement of Comprehensive Income is produced using the balances from the expense accounts and income accounts. The profit earned or losses incurred is determined and transferred to the appropriate account in the Statement of Financial Position. International Accounting Standard 1 requires an entity to present all items of income and expense recognised in a period. It requires that there is a distinction made between items of profit and loss and items of other comprehensive income in the Statement of Profit and Loss and Other Comprehensive Income. This can be done by producing two separate statements or by combining the statements dealing with profit or loss first and then comprehensive income. The elements of the Statement of Comprehensive Income are Income and Expense. Income is the increase in an organisation's economic benefit during the accounting period that results in the increase in capital. This can be in the form of direct inflows of cash, enhancements of assets or in the decrease of a liability. Revenue represents the earnings of an organisation through its ordinary activities and gains represents all other items of income. Expenses are the decrease in an organisation's economic benefit during the accounting period that results in the decrease in capital. This can be in the form of direct outflows of cash, depletion of an asset or the increase of a liability. Shown here is a very basic pro forma of the Statement of Comprehensive Income. First you take your sales figure. You may also see sales referred to as revenue. Sales or revenue is the monetary value of goods and services supplied to the customer. It is as a result of an organization's operating activities, i.e. selling goods or providing a service. You then subtract cost of sales. These are the direct cost relating to the production of goods or services sold. Direct costs include the cost of materials used in creating the good, along with the direct labour costs used to produce the good. It excludes indirect expenses such as distribution and sales costs. You then have your gross profit or loss. Organisations then want to know what the income from operations is. In order to get the income from operation figure, you must subtract all other operational expenses such as distribution and administrative costs. These are added together and then subtracted from the gross profit or loss figure to get your overall operating profit or loss figure for the period. Profit from operations is the figure that represents an organisation's total earnings from its normal operations. It is an organisation's income before any non-operational income or expense such as interest received or taxes are subtracted. Operational income is often viewed by financial analysts as more reliable figure than the net income figure for judging an organisation's performance as operational income is the income that is within the control of the organisation's managers. The likes of interest and taxes are out with the control of the managers. Non-operational income or expense is then added or charged to the profit or loss statement to get the entity's profit before tax figure. Non-operational income and expense are items such as finance costs and investment income. Tax expenses are then charged to get profit for the period. Other comprehensive income are all charges that are not permitted to be included in the profit and loss. The Financial Accounting Standards Board defines comprehensive income as the change in equity of a business's enterprise during a period from transactions and other events and circumstances from non-owner sources. 
It includes all changes in equity during a period except those resulting from investment by owners and distributions to owners. Other comprehensive income is usually unrealized income that reflects a remeasurement because of movements in price or valuation of assets. Other comprehensive income includes the likes of changes in the fair value of available for sale financial assets, foreign currency translation adjustments on foreign subsidiaries, revaluation of property, plant and equipment, etc. The purpose of the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income is to show an entity's financial performance in a way that is useful to a wide range of users, so that they may attempt to assess the future profit or loss of an entity. As per the conceptual framework, the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income should be classified and aggregated in a manner that makes it understandable and comparable. Thank you.